Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on this beautiful Sunday morning. It is so great to see you out there and all of you in virtual land as well. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening hymn, Grateful. Grateful for the morning. Here we go. Grateful, Grateful for, for the morning. morning. Grateful for the sunlight on my face. Grateful for the feeling. Grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this place, grateful for believing that God is all there is, that God is all there is. Grateful for the morning, grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling, grateful for Good morning. <laughs> Good morning to all of you who have joined us via Facebook Live and Zoom as well. So I know we normally go straight into invocation, but I forgot last week. We're back in person, so can I please ask if you have a cell phone with you <laughs> here in the sanctuary? <laughs> Could you please make sure it is silenced so we can enjoy this time free of distractions? Greatly appreciate it, and I love that I get to make that announcement again. <laughs> yeah. So, with that, let's turn our attention inward. And indeed, how grateful we are to be together, whether it be in person here or joined together virtually, knowing that we are always one in the one life, the one love, the one infinite creative power that is God. I absolutely know that that one permeates all creation, that its nature is in everything and every one, including each of us gathered for this service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science this morning. I know that as we come together, that vibration of connection, whether we are here in this room or attending virtually, we still can feel a connection. That's because of that oneness, that love of God that we all share. I know it is that vibration of love that is flowing through all those who are of service this morning. I absolutely know that it is that beauty, artistry, creativity of God that flows through Sam and Karen and Margaret, our soloist, and Mary, who leads our chants. And I know that the perfect message of God is spoken to us this morning through Dr. Mark. I absolutely know that Dr. Mark is that vessel through which we hear what we need to hear to awaken to the truth of that God nature at the center of our being, to see it more fully outpictured in our lives and to be the greater expressions of it. And so I'm giving thanks right now in this moment for all the blessings, the healing and revealing of goodness that unfolds in our time together. Knowing it's all of God, I say thank you, God, and I release this word knowing this so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen.
you now to please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now let's join in our congregational hymn, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am, and so it is. God is the joy that I am. God is the joy that I am. God is the joy that I am, and so it is. Okay, so this is our opportunity now to meditate. So I invite you to just get still in your chairs. Or for those of you at home, or however you are, whatever you are seated in, just to get still, turn your attention inward, closing our eyes. And so for the next five minutes, I invite you to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just once again, repeat that over and over silently to yourself, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
Margaret Ellens, everyone. Well, good morning and welcome back to church. God, it is so good to see you. I just love seeing people. Uh, I'm going to talk today a little bit about uh, the Golden Key, which is probably not unfamiliar to many of you. I'm a big fan of Emmett Fox. Emmett Fox uh, was born in 1886 and passed in 1951. He was a New Thought leader and writer. He was born in Ireland and then went to England. His father was in Parliament, I believe, and then eventually to the United States. In 1931, I just think, you know, it's interesting to know a little bit about the people where these principles come through. Uh, in 31, he accepted the position of minister in New York City at the Church of the Healing Christ. This was a divine science church. Um, and this was, of course, at the height of the Depression. 
And he gave this teaching on the golden key, and he called it a practical guide for getting out of trouble. <laughs> Which I think, boy, that was probably uh, really appealing to a lot of people at that time, um, and it's appealing to me uh, today. Um, in this uh, writing of his, which is a very small little booklet, he says, you must not under any pretense allow your mind to dwell on any thought that is not positive, constructive, optimistic, and kind. Right? So he's talking about us maintaining an uplifted consciousness, a consciousness of truth, a consciousness of wholeness and healing all the time. Hmm. He says that for us, scientific prayer, and, and when we talk about scientific prayer in our church, in, the, in North Hollywood here, we are talking specifically about spiritual mind treatment because this is the way that Ernest Holmes, the founder of our denomination, gave us a method to pray in an affirmative way that did not include the old ways of begging and beseeching and please, 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 that scientific prayer is a way, it's a technique to think about God instead, in an intelligent way. Not like, oh, please God, please God, please God. Not that way at all, but to think about God in a principled, intelligent, high-minded way. See, because scientific prayer will, in fact, get us out of difficulties, because God is. And where God is, there can be no fear, there can be no lack, there can be no difficulty, there can be no problem. God is omnipotent. So what that means is God is all-powerful. And if we would take a moment to just think on that, all right, God is all-powerful, and God is right here in this situation where I am. So therefore, if God is all-powerful, if God is omnipotent, and we are made in the image and likeness of God, it must mean that you and I, we have some dominion in our life, in our experience. And I believe we have that dominion because God gave us that dominion. And so our job as students of this science is to know and believe and accept and embrace and remember and affirm the presence of God in all things. And what we will see is all things will unfold in a higher order. Everyone has the ability to use this power, I'm certain. You know, in scientific prayer, it is God who does the work and not you and not me. I mean, you know, so our perceived limitations, our perceived weaknesses, our perceived lackings are of no account in the process at all. No, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You can have been telling the same story or have had the same problem for years. It does not matter because principle is not bound by precedent. And as soon as we start to infuse light into the seeming darkness, the darkness necessarily disappears. So remember, when we pray in the affirmative, in scientific prayer, it is always God, it is spirit that is doing the work. And we happen to be the channels through which the divine action takes place. And your treatment is really about getting yourself out of the, out of the way. Right? So, so what do we need? We need an open mind, and we've got to have some faith here. Right? And so the method that I'm going to share today is actually very, very simple. Stop thinking about the difficulty, whatever the difficulty is, you know, and think about God instead. So difficulties, oh my gosh, this is going on in the world. Think about God instead. Oh, my finances, think about God instead. My health, think about God instead. My family, think about God instead. It's not that all those outer things are not important. But what we're going to do is that we're going to raise our consciousness to the level of this is what's true about God. And because God is omnipresent, what's true about God must be true about me, my circumstances, the conditions in my life. We want to work by um, releasing anything and everything and repeating and, and rehearsing everything and everything we know about God. So, you know, in, in a lot of the classes I teach, I do this little exercise called the sacred software upgrade. And what it is, is we examine our old idea of God, and then we say, okay, what's the greater truth I know about God today since I am in metaphysical study? So my old idea of God might have been that God was vengeful. And now my new idea of God, my upgrade, is that God is love itself. You know, my old idea of God is that God might have been punishing, but my upgrade is that God only knows to give of God's self to each and every one of us. So we, we may have to do a little upgrade, you know, because if you still have the idea of God you had as a child and it has not evolved and grown with your consciousness over years, over the years, it's time for, for an upgrade there, right? So um, your goal, my goal, I think, is to drive the idea of difficulty out 
of our consciousness for a few minutes, just for a few minutes, you know, at least, and substitute it for what we know to be the truth about God, the truth about spirit. And so this is the crux of the whole activity. If you can become so absorbed in the consideration of the spiritual world and the spiritual truth that you forget even for a little while about the difficulty, you will find that you comfortably rise up and out of the difficulty. This is just part of how spiritual law operates. See, and if it's a person, say, just like maybe your difficulty could be a person, maybe not you, maybe I'm the only one, but, but you know, if, if your difficulty is a person, I will now say, okay, I have to golden key, because that's the technique, the golden key, I will golden key earnest, right? And what that means is I will drive all thoughts of earnest out of my mind and replace them with thoughts of God. So if I was thinking, oh, that Ernest, he really makes me crazy. He upsets me. He always says something or doesn't do what he says or blah, blah, blah. Then I would say, all right, what do I know about God? God is love and God is peace and God is wholeness and God is the divine activity and God is everywhere. And I just need to stay with this for a few minutes so that there is actually a change of mind, a shift in consciousness within me. All right, so let me tell you how this works. So I was at the bank the other day. And I, I, always, I always have to watch what I'm going to talk about because I have to practice it during the week. <sighs> so, so I'm at the bank, and, um, and for some reason, I'm just having a bad time at the bank. I walked into the bank, and the security guard stopped me right at the door. Okay, and I look in the bank, and there's like nobody. In the, there's hardly anybody in the bank. And I said, like, okay, well, all right, this is a new rule. Stay here. And so I'm standing there, and he says, you know, this is for um, social distancing. And, and I've got my mask on, and I'm totally disinfected, and okay, great. And so I'm standing there, and then I notice this is one of those things. You know how the rules are the rules until they're not the rules? All right? So we're all about social distancing, and I'm standing there, and I'm being patient, and I'm social distancing, and I'm being patient. And then a very attractive blonde woman comes up, and she stands right in front of me. Well, social distancing, I want you to know, in this moment has gone out the window. He no longer cares about social distancing because he is enthralled with this woman. And, and I'm not saying that he shouldn't be, but <laughs> let's remember the social distancing. So <clears throat> I have a little bit of a meltdown in my mind, and I think the best thing I can do is step out of the bank and practice the golden key. So I just step out the door, and I sit on a little bench there, and I'm just doing like a little golden key thing, a little golden key thing, a little golden key thing. I go back into the bank. It was actually no better. And I realized, I realized this was my own fault. I was trying to manipulate the situation. I was not sincere. So I go back out, and I decide I will walk to another bank a couple blocks away and do the same business. It's okay. I can do this. This is not a problem. I think that's how to do it. I'm so conscious. I manifested another bank, right? <laughs> so I'm golden king. I'm thinking about God instead. I'm thinking about God instead. And in this thinking about God instead, somebody I love and adore calls me and gives me really good news. And it's like, oh my God, that's fantastic. This is great. I feel so good. I got the phone. And I thought, I don't really need to be at the other. Oh, all right, so I'm gonna t I've got to tell the truth. I'm in church. So I had walked all the way to the other bank, but now the other bank is closed. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, I'm feeling so good now because I did this golden key and my consciousness is uplifted and good news has come to me. I bet you if I go back to the first bank, it will be better. And so I walk in. And now the security guard is gone. I think he's outside having a cigarette or something. That's okay. He's just gone. It's okay. I'm great. Okay, he's not even here. Ah. And the manager says, oh, why don't you come into my office? I'll help you. Okay. I go in, handle my bed. So there really was something to this. When I really took my mind off of the security guard is my problem and the bank is not doing it right and, blah, 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 and all that stuff that goes on in our head, and I focused on God instead something good came out of it. And what came out of it is I got some good news from a dear friend, but it shifted my mind. It shifted my consciousness enough so I was able to go back in and do what needed to be done. <sighs> what is it I know about God? God is love. God is peace. God is harmony. 
God is light, all of these things. And I just go over that again and again and again. And if I do this, I, oh, and we just need to do this a couple, a few times, several times a day, and then drop it. I'm not asking you to change your thinking for every thought you have in a 24-hour period. It's just a simple technique. But you know, like so many simple techniques, it's not so easy. If you think about this, what great spiritual masters came on the planet to teach us was to do very simple things consistently. And if we did them consistently, our lives would transform. Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor. Well, that's pretty simple, isn't it? Oh, love God, love your neighbor. Easy breezy. Not so easy to practice, is it? Love God and love my neighbor. Well, Buddha said if we would watch our thoughts with great attention, we could actually become enlightened by watching where our attention went. Oh my God, sounds very simple, right? But you know, not as easy to practice as one would think. So simple techniques, not always so easy. You know, if, if you were, as I have been lately, you know, I have not been somebody who has had a lot of anxiety. That has just never been my thing. But I've noticed in the last 14 months, anxiety has crept onto the menu. And I don't like it. I want it to leave the menu. You know, it's like, oh, hello, anxiety. Hmm, this is not my anxiety. This must just be anxiety that's come to visit. Hmm, well, it says in the Bible it came to pass. So I'm going to trust that this anxiety is going to pass. So Emmett Fox, his suggestion is repeating statements of absolute truth. Absolute truth. There is no power but God. I am the beloved child of God, filled and surrounded by the perfect peace of God. God is love. God is the love that is within me right now. God's wisdom and intelligence guide me. On and on and on like that. Trying to figure out a solution ahead of time is what we call outlining, right? It's like we're tr that's when we're trying to tell God the how to do it. Now, the how always belongs to God. Right? Our job is to think about God instead. We don't have to think, how's God going to accomplish this? Maybe God would like 24 suggestions from me on how, you know, 24 quick tips on how to be God in my favor or something like that. No. The point is we all want out of the difficulty, don't we? Yes, absolutely. And the truth is that if you do your part, God absolutely does God's part. So if you embrace this, it will be effective. Putting the golden key into practice I'm telling you, this will change your life. And it's effective because it focuses on the mind of God. It focuses on the first cause. And that's where the answer to any seeming problem out here in the world of effects is. The answer is in the mind of God. So we're going to take our mind off the problem now. We're going to put it on God. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some words I've taken from, uh, many of you know the writer, a spiritual writer, and she's on TV now, Ian Van Zant. I really like her. She was at a conference um, I was in charge of some years back, and I thought she was just wonderful and really real. And so um, that realness really struck me, and so that's what inspired me to, to look in her work today. So I'm going to invite you just to turn your attention inward now, and we'll do a piece of inner work together, okay? So as we turn our attention inward, bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing. And notice that with each breath, the area of your heart becomes fuller and richer and deeper. Because it's really, it's the point of our breath where the highest God and the innermost God, in fact, become one God. So we know that God is omnipresent. And each of us, in his image and likeness, have dominion over all things. God is wisdom and God is truth. God is peace. God is power. God is inconceivable love. God is present everywhere at all times in fullness. And you and I, as the image and likeness of God, we have dominion over all things. You and I, as the image and likeness of God, have the power of the word. And when we speak the word, it goes forth and cannot return to us void. It is accomplished. The thing whereunto we send it, it is done. So our word now goes forth, charged with the power that is God. And I speak this word, and I say that the full power of God is now awakened in each and every one of us, filling our souls with life and love and peace and joy. God is light. God's light now fills my mind, my heart, my body, and my soul. God is love. God's love fills my heart and mind, body and soul. 
God is truth. God's truth fills me now. God is radiant health. God's radiant presence fills me now. God is wholeness and divine intelligence. God is wisdom. God is joy. God is peace. And you and I, we are the beloved of God. And what's true of God is true of us. And so we are filled and surrounded by the perfect and divine presence of God in all of its fullness. Every aspect of our mind, our life, our being is now brought into perfect harmony, into perfect alignment with all that God is and all that is good. And so I claim for each and every one of us today that there is perfect healing in every area of our life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, because I know that with God, all things are possible. I know that our healing is assured. And we include our friends and loved ones in our prayer today, knowing that they too are surrounded and filled with God's infinite presence. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world around us. So it reaches out to all people everywhere, everyone included on the face of the earth, everyone blessed, cared for, lifted up in consciousness. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we are blessed by being together. Because we have dominion and because we have the power of the word, I speak this word for peace in our world. Peace for all people everywhere. And with a heart that's full, we say thank you God for all of this that it truly is done unto us as we believe and we do believe. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. We'll take your collection when you exit church. Thank you. Nothing less 
yes, and now I'm surrendering to this unyielding bliss. I say, yes, universe, bring me more of this. Shiny, splendid, warm, and centered, whole, and wanting nothing more. She relation in joyous anticipation of the bounty that's in Surrendering to this unyielding bliss, I say, yes, universe, bring me more of this. 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 Margaret Owens. Thank you. Thank you so much, Margaret. For those of you who would like to get more of Margaret's music for inspiration, her website is margaretowens.com. I love it when soloists make it easy for us to get to their website. Let's show some love and appreciation for our wonderful <laughs> Sam and Karen, as always. And then before I proceed, I believe I'm supposed to ask Dr. Mark to get up. <laughs> okay. So we're both um, all jabbed up. So we're good. We're good. Okay. <laughs> I don't want you to worry about it. So we have um, a very special announcement. And, I, and before we say the announcement, I want you to tell, to tell yourself, don't run with this. Okay? Don't run with this. Don't make stuff up. Hmm. But we have something very special to share. <laughs> so, um, end of last year, my husband Joe was able to take early retirement, and we have decided that we really want to be able to spend more time together with free time, and so I will be stepping into retirement mode uh, as of June 30th. But, uh, but, 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 wait, listen, but, <laughs> I will still be here. I'm not leaving the church. <laughs> I will still be. <laughs> How great is that? Right? So we're retiring his number, but we're not retiring him. <laughs> I, I sent an email to our practitioners on Friday because I wanted them to know first. And I really emphasize that point. I would like people to see this as a transition from one role into another. So I won't be doing as much, but I will be here. I'll be overseeing the Pratt Corps still for a while. I'll be overseeing Ministry of Prayer. I have plenty of things to do where Joe will, and I will still have lots of free time uh, to do what we want to do too. And one of the big callings, as you can imagine, is when we decide we want to go to France next, it won't be for two or three weeks. <laughs> I'm going to hang out with my family. <laughs> so, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, thank you for, like, not applauding right away when you heard I was leaving. <laughs> right, so we can make other announcements. Okay. So, so that was the big announcement, but now these. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Mark, Mark has been here at the church since before dirt. But, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, but he's been here working with me on staff for 20 years. Yeah. That's pretty impressive, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do love having the title of the longest term assistant minister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, and 
just so you know, uh, although we're talking about Wednesday evening services uh, still being virtual, we will be reopening before I leave, probably uh, second week in June. So just so you know, we'll have, we'll have lots of chances to see each other. So with that, <laughs> let me uh, just remind you of a few things. As far as donations go, for those of you here, as Dr. Mark said, uh, if you want to drop off a donation, there are boxes uh, at the back of the sanctuary as you exit. Uh, the ushers will be able to take your donation there. For those of you who are joining us online, uh, you can call into the church for 30 minutes uh, after the service, up to 30 minutes after the service, and you can make your donation over the phone with credit or debit card. You can also go to our website, nhcrs.org, then forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page where you can make a donation, uh, either a one-time or a recurring donation, or you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. Uh, we will have prayer with a practitioner available via Zoom. Now, here's how this works for those of you who are here right now, uh, because we are still observing social distancing. If you're interested in prayer, uh, please let us know when you're out on the patio, and we will have a practitioner call you to give you prayer. Those of you who are on Facebook Live, get onto our Zoom uh, site, and we can connect you with a practitioner one-on-one -on -one for prayer. And uh, you can also call into the church office, 818-762-7566. Option four allows you to leave a recorded message with a prayer request. And we check those emails and, oh, and you can uh, email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org. We check all of those uh, messages every evening. So we make sure you are being supported in prayer. Wednesday evening service, my topic this week is pedestals be gone. So, <laughs> so you don't get to put me on one, ha ha. <laughs> so the meditation starts at 6.50, service is at 7 p.m. Our grief support group, no, you don't need to go to that just because I'm gonna be <laughs> retiring, but <laughs> for those of you who are experiencing some sense of loss and grief, uh, the Grief Support Group is meeting. It's being led by Carol Winokur. They'll be on Zoom today at 1 p.m. And Carol just does an amazing job of uh, helping people through that grief process. Now, some really exciting news. Save the date for a very exciting movie night, June 18th. That's Friday evening at 7 p.m. We, NHCRS, will be screening Sound of Metal for limited in-person attendance and remote viewing. So we'll be doing the hybrid thing again. Uh, the event will be hosted by Paul Racy, who was nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor this year, and his wife, Liz Racy, who's a practitioner here at North Hollywood Church. And so we'll have a Q&A with Liz and Paul after the screening. Tickets are $10 and will be available for purchase on our website. Um, are they available already, Terry? No, okay, May, tw May 27th. And we look forward to seeing you either in person or on Zoom for that event. Now this one, you know, here's the thing about this new mode we're in, is things are changing minute by minute. The texts that we send back and forth, so are we doing this or are we doing this? So I need to ask my boss here, did we decide we're still having signups for next Sunday uh, for limited person intended? No, we're not. No. That was the final decision. Okay. Just come so, to church. Just come to church if you want to come in person. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we're still broadcasting via, via Facebook Live and Zoom. So we just love that you're here, whether you're here in person or online. We so appreciate it, and we so appreciate the ways you continue to support our community. Reminder that for those of you on Zoom, the Zoom virtual patio will continue 20 minutes before Sunday and Wednesday service and after service, and um, also for, that's for both Wednesday and Sunday. And the men's group meets from 11 to 11.30 uh, on Sunday via Zoom. All men are welcome. 
And our Zoom meditation continues. I see some of you here who attend that on Wednesday mornings. Nice to see you in person. Um, that's every Monday through Saturday from uh, 8 to 8.15 a.m. For more information, you know to go to nhcrs.org and uh, you can get all the links to the different Zoom activities and you can sign up for our monthly newsletters, weekly e-blasts. And with that, again, thank you for being with us, all of you, here in the sanctuary and beyond. Oh, that feels so <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> And thank you for all your love and support. Let's stand and let's sing the peace song. <laughs> So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.